Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've gotta head over to BHB because we have a little bit of an issue with a really cool snake that I have to do a little bit of treatment on to keep it going. It just, uh, it has a little bit of a medical issue. So let's head over there and let's go take care of this snake. So I've actually showed this technique before to you, but not on this interesting snake. And this is just basically a prescription cat food from Science Diet. So it's just, a, you know, it's really good. It's medicated and so like that. You do need a prescription to get it, but our vet gives us our opportunity to do that. I want to mix it with a little bit of water just because I want to make it into a slurry, right? It's a little bit too thick to actually tube a snake right now. So I'm going to make a little bit of a slurry and then I'm going to use this. This is actually liquid flagell or mitronidazole. And I'm just going to put just a little bit in here, just a touch in here, nothing too major. And that's just going to help cure kind of any kind of stomach ailments, flagellates, something like that. And I'm going to mix this up really good. Again, I want to make this into a slurry where, you know, there's some protein in, there's hydration in here. I'm going to probably add a little bit more more water to this afterwards as well because hydration is a big thing and so basically what happened is this sunbeam snake I'm about to get actually regurgitated and typically what we want to do is actually give them a week off of food and then feed them a small meal but unfortunately it regurgitated a second time that usually tells me that there's something going on and some treatment is a good way to go so let's get the snake and we'll take you through the process it's gonna be interesting because this one's mouth is really strange and it's a really wild snake So here it is, a sunbeam snake. Absolutely incredible animals. One of the more interesting animals, but they have a nasty musk. Oh, even, oh man, my our hands are already just full of the musk. It smells real garlicky and just kind of interesting. But you can see what I was talking about with that little flat mouth. It's gonna be a little bit interesting to get the tube in, but we can absolutely do it. And again, still in very good body shape. So typically when I wanna treat an animal, I wanna treat an animal before it becomes kind of thin and kind of then it's hard to get it back, right? So right now we're really good. I think one, maybe two treatments of this in a week and we'll be 100%. This will start eating again, probably retain the food, I sure hope. And I think we'll be back on track. Probably 95% of the time this works for me. So again, nice slurry here. So what I'm gonna do, set the snake down for one second. I'm gonna take this right here, which is actually a 35 ml syringe and I'm just gonna suck up a bunch of this stuff. You know, I want a pretty good amount because you know, this is gonna give it a lot of nutrition, it's gonna give them a little medication, and then more importantly, it's also gonna give it hydration. Now, I don't want air in this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of push it all the way up here, then I'm gonna put the catheter on here, and then I'm gonna actually even squeeze out until it starts to come out here, because again, I don't wanna push air into the stomach, there you go. Now, the thing is, this is the interesting part, so I'm gonna kinda of very gently hold it, and then I'm gonna to try to see if I can't get this just really gently into its mouth. And normally you can kind of get the snake to open its mouth just by prying it just a little bit, just like that. Now I'm gonna really gently put it down its gullet right here and you gotta make sure obviously you see the glottis, right? That's where it breathes. You don't wanna push it down the glottis, that breathing hole. You wanna push it down the actual esophagus and just really gently just go down. You wanna go down about half the length of the body, maybe a little bit less than half the length of the body. And sometimes I'll even tuck the snake in my shoulder right there just so I can keep it straight. You can usually, you know, typically if you have someone else to help you, it's even better to be honest with you. That's about how far I wanna go. Now I'm gonna hold this up like this. I'm gonna hold the snake up and I'm gonna very slowly just tube all of that stuff in. Now some of that mixture is gonna be in the actual catheter, right? And I talked about hydration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now suck up probably two or three cc's of water and I'm gonna put that water back through the catheter. Not only is it gonna clear out all that solution, but it's also gonna give it a little bit more hydration because oftentimes when a snake starts to regurgitate, it actually is a dehydration issue, not to mention it's not getting hydration from the actual prey. Now, I'm gonna slowly remove this. Obviously, you always disinfect everything after. I wanna hold the snake up as far as I can and just kinda of massage down. I don't want it to actually spit up the stuff that I just tubed down, right? I wanna get that down, so I'll probably hold this like this for a good probably you know minute or two to be totally honest with you and then hopefully all of that nutrition and all of that medication and all that hydration will be great now what I'm gonna do is probably give this maybe a week and depending on how it looks I'll either offer it a really small meal or I'll tube it again one more time it just depends on how it looks this one looks really good so I have a feeling that in a week I'll be able to just go ahead and offer this one food you can see its tongues coming out well now I know it's not gonna spit anything else up because its tongue is flickering and stuff like that and that's it that's 
that's the way that you medicate the snake. Now, let me just say, I don't want you to do this, okay? Number one, you probably can't get the flagell. You probably can't get the prescription science diet without having vets that work with you. We have a vet that works with us all the time, so she knows I know what I'm doing. The point is, is that, you know, this is the way you can do it with your vet. Maybe if you go to a vet and they don't know, this is a great technique that really saves a lot of snakes' lives, and I just wanted to show you. But what an absolutely gorgeous snake. I'm gonna get this one back in his cage and uh, let it chill out for the day. You know, every day is an adventure around here. You never know how the day is gonna go and you gotta take it in stride the best you can. Today I got back from the gym and I was actually greeted by Animal Control. That's right, someone had called Animal Control on the fact that we weren't taking care of Drogo properly and that he was kept in a super small enclosure and it was just not fair to him. So I wanted to first off thank you because it gave us an opportunity to even strengthen our relationship with the Animal Control because they came in, they loved Drogo, they actually said that it was one of the best days of their life. They took selfies with Drogo, they petted Drogo, and they loved him. And then they had a chance to feed alligators and a few other things. So the animal control has been here a couple times because people have wasted their time by trying to call on us. And they're always like, we love when we get calls about you guys because we can come out and hang out and have a good time. And they knew we were gonna take care of Drogo. So uh, that uh, is good. Now we have a better relationship with animal control. So thank you for calling on us. Of course, Lori always is taking pride in her gift shop area, which is, by the way, turned out to be one of the best things we've ever done. We need to about triple the size of our gift shop, to be honest with you. But uh, you've got these look great, Lori. I love these. Look at the little basket of sloths. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Of course, our coloring books are now officially out. We have our sloths over here. Oh, I didn't even see this. These are all of the souvenir snake sheds and stuff like that. Look at how cool that is. That's actually sunrise right there. We have all kinds of souvenirs. Ooh, and they got some creepy crawly souvenirs. This is awesome. Oh, some eggs. So these are awesome. So good. The thing is, uh, Definitely gift shops coming together well. I definitely think we need to put snake sheds on the website though. I'm working on it. Working on it. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanted to buy snake shed souvenirs from the Reptarium. Just taking a look through the racks of our sale ball pythons down here at BHB in the dungeon. And I can't believe some of these snakes are still available to be honest with you. This is actually an albino clown ball python. So a double recessive albino and a clown. And uh, I just love the way the orange kind of pops through. Kind of a subtle morph, but still really cool. The other thing I notice is that this time of year, you notice I always have black marks all over my hands because that means it's breeding season and I'm not very good with the marker. We went through this last year again, but uh, it is crazy how I just mark up my hands so much, but nevertheless, really the snake is beautiful too. And this one is actually a sibling to one of the ones that I actually kept. This is a cinnamon, a fire, and a cypress ball python. Love that. Like I said, the one I kept has a little bit more solid striping, but nevertheless, that mutation is ridiculously cool. Genetically, this one's a powerhouse too. This is actually a lemon blast red stripe yellow belly. So it's a pastel, it's a pinstripe, it's a red stripe, and it's a yellow belly. A lot of things can be done with an animal like this. I mean, the genetics are absolutely off the charts. This is actually a super pastel G striper genetic stripe the genetic stripe is a recessive and of course it's got the super pastel on it too I just have always loved the G stripe stuff from the beginning the first G stripe I ever bought was from Jeremy Stone paid thirty thousand dollars for it now they're pretty affordable and they are absolutely beautiful too certainly one of the downsides of salt and pepper getting larger is that you have to clean their enclosure a lot more they're a lot dirtier so again the filtration is really good on here and know RJ being a really large animal uh, doesn't seem to need to have nearly the amount of clean but he also also has rocks on the bottom that actually have like a kind of biofiltration on them a uh, whole bunch of different things so regardless just got to do a quick maintenance on these guys basically what I do is I take my pondo back I suck out as much as I can and there's actually a drain that I can turn that causes the pump for the waterfall to actually pump the water out which makes it really easy and then we just fill it right back up so it's really not a big deal but now we're having to do that maybe two or three times a week whereas before it was maybe once every other week so uh, that's just part of these guys getting big
just like that, salt and pepper's enclosure looks so much better. I mean, look at how absolutely adorable these things are. I mean, Salty's like, hey, what's going on? Pepper is getting big. These guys are growing. We're definitely gonna have to do that Reptarium 3.0 pretty soon, because these guys are gonna outgrow their habitat pretty quickly. But uh, I'm glad that's one less thing I have to do today. Check it off the list. All right, guys, they are now available. The coloring books, which are really more like a coloring comic book, to be honest with you. This is After Hours at the Reptarium. Just amazing illustrations that my friends did. You can color these guys. They're available. You can go to the reptarium.com and get you some, because I'm telling you what, this is amazing. This is volume one, and definitely when we're sold out of volume one, we're not gonna make any more, so make sure to get volume one, and then we'll maybe start working on volume two. forever making improvements at the zoo, that's for sure. You guys know that we take it super serious, the nutrition that we have for these animals. And my friends over at Cold-Blooded Cafe have hooked us up all the time. I mean, we buy all our stuff from them. Definitely, if you need frozen rodents, they have the highest quality, the nutritional value, the way they're packed is super clean. Definitely go down in the description. I've got a link to their website. Go check them out. It's definitely a great thing. Again, this isn't a paid brand thing. It's just for friends of mine, and they are amazing. And I know that you guys can get some really good deals on rodents to feed your snakes. And I know you're gonna get really, really good rodents for it. So go show them some love. Now this one is a really good genetic one right here. This is actually a banana chocolate kingspin, which basically just means it's a banana, it's a chocolate, it's a spider, it's a pinstripe, and it's a lesser. I mean, that's a lot of incomplete dominant genes in there, and they are all really cool. So although the animal itself doesn't have like that huge contrast, the actual genetics behind it, ooh, doggy, you could do some damage with this one. Then take a look at the head on this animal here. This is actually an Enchi clown ball python. So it's just a clown and then an incomplete dominant Enchi, but wow, that Enchi and that clown gene mixed together so well. I'm shocked that this one's still available. Another two gene clown that's really cool is just this leopard clown ball python. Again, much like that Enchi mixes really well with the clown, the leopard mixes really well. So this is just a leopard and a clown, and it's really gorgeous. And then this is basically the exact same animal, just adding the lesser into it, and it just really lightens it up and cleans it up. So it's a lesser leopard clown ball python. And again, I'm not trying to push you guys to buy anything because trust me, we do fine. I'm just kind of surprised as I'm walking around looking at stuff going, I can't even believe some of this stuff is still available. I mean, it is so great. I mean, the, the genetics behind it, they're so beautiful. So, But I have no doubt that it, they won't make it till spring. I have no doubt about that. But there's still some bangers available at BHP Reptiles. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you have an amazing day. If you don't mind doing me a couple favors here, right over here you can hit one or two of these playlists over here. It would be really, really great. Up here you can subscribe to my podcast channel. This side closing in on 3 million people. Hit that subscription button. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.